Hi, I'm Jonathan M0JSX, and at the moment, as I record this, the International Space Station is doing another of their SSTV activations. And they do this from time to time, usually around some kind of holiday season, uh, but it's happening at the moment. Uh, it started back on Friday, as I record this, Friday the 11th, and it runs through to, as I record this, tomorrow, Wednesday, the 16th of April. And I thought in this video, I'll just go through how I decode these pictures because I wouldn't consider what I have in my setup to be anything near out of the ordinary uh, or anything particularly specialist either. So let's just break it down a little bit. I use an application called Yonic, uh, Y-O-N-I-Q, uh, which is a spin-off of the MMSS TV application. It works in a very similar way, supports all the same modes. Yonic just has a few extra nice things in it, like being able to choose a particular sound card over what MMSS TV can do. Uh, so in terms of how it looks, it looks very similar to MMSS TV. The radio I happen to use uh, is the normal radio I use uh, in the shack most of the time for VHF UHF, which is my trusty old Yaesu FT8900. The antenna uh, is just my V2000 on the roof, which I use that's my VHF, UHF antenna all the time. So I'm not doing anything special in terms of a beam pointing it at the space station or anything like that. And to be honest, you don't need to. Uh, and then to get audio from the radio to the computer, I'm using a DigiRig, which I've done a video on before. I'll link it up there. Uh, but the DigiRig uh, is a little interface designed for a bunch of different radios, handhelds, mobiles, HF base stations. You name it, uh, the DigiRig will have a cable for it. Uh, and when I got mine, I asked DigiRig for a cable for, uh, actually at the time it was my FT857. However, although I don't have that radio anymore, one of the cables fits the 8900. So I'm able to get audio in to my computer using the DigiRig. But you don't necessarily need to use any of that because you can use a very simple handheld with its rubber like antenna. Uh, and there are SSTV applications for your phone and you can literally just hold your phone up to the speaker of the uh, handheld and that will work. So what I did is I recorded an entire pass. So the space station has just gone over here. It's uh, just gone 11 o'clock in the morning and the space station has just done a pass. So let's have a look and a listen ultimately to how it sounds. Now I'm not going to play the whole thing because that's a 10 minute video in itself. We might do that as a separate, but uh, I thought I'd just give you some highlights of each picture. Now I got three pictures on this pass. It was a very high pass. It went almost over at 90 degrees. Uh, so I got three pictures out of it. The pictures are not perfect. And uh, so the last picture in particular, I think is particularly interesting. So uh, let's have a look at the uh, first picture and we'll have a listen to it coming in and then we'll have a quick chat about it. So looking at the first picture, we can see that it's pretty grainy and there's a lot of noise in the picture. That's what that sort of green is. And that's because uh, the space station passes from west to east and my view looking west is a bit more restrictive than it is looking east. So we can see that actually we've got uh, quite a bit of noise uh, in the picture. Now, this image started transmitting not long after the space station had come above the horizon for me. So that's why we can see a lot of that noise and it's going through and it's tumbling through space and yeah, we get noise on the image. And as I say, it's also low down. We're, we're still in the physics of VHF, UHF and line of sight. So that's what's causing that noise. But we can still see, we can read humans in space. We can still just about see some of the um, call signs and the fact that it's slide 11 of 12, which means they're in this particular activation, they are transmitting a series of 12 images 
uh, on a cycle. So moving on to the next image and let's have a listen to it first. So this image was when the space station was almost directly overhead, hence why it's a pretty clear image and um, possibly one of the best that I've ever received. There's still a little bit of noise in there, which is simply because my antenna is a straight vertical. Uh, and if the space station is going over the top, well, there's going to come a point where it's hitting the direct top of my antenna, which is not ideal. Hence why if you have got a little beam that you can uh, rotate around, you're going to get a better image overall. But even so, that is a fantastic image uh, being received. We can clearly see um, all the text, we can see all the call signs. Yeah, we've just got a tiny bit of noise mixed in there. And um, that could also just be a little bit of local interference. Nothing to say that's particularly come from the space station. That could just be local something to me. Maybe someone switched their kettle on and just caused a little bit of interference. I don't know. But that's, uh, yeah, I'm happy with that one. And let's move across to the last uh, image I received. And this one, let's listen to it from about halfway through the picture towards the end. So if we look at this image, we can see that it starts off really clearly and on the recording, it's really strong at the start. But as it goes through, the space station is, is getting towards the end of its path. So what we see is that before the picture has finished being received, the space station has gone around the Earth and is no longer in line of sight with me. Hence why about that sort of last quarter, is all noise because at that point the space station has gone around the earth uh, and has has lost its signal with me hence why we don't get the full picture there so it starts off nice and strong when actually is is what we're seeing here is actually the fact that the v2000 works best when signals are quite low because it wouldn't have been all that high over, above the sky above the horizon at the start of the picture but as it's just gone down it's gone around the earth so we can see that the v2000 is working very nicely at, at low angles but we can also see is that the, it, the space station just went around the, around the earth uh, lost its uh, i lost my view of it and it's gone so there we have it receiving pictures from space a really quick and dirty video this one uh, but if you happen to see this video uh, sort of within a few hours of me uploading it then there is a chance that you'll still be able to get in and receive some pictures from this activation. But do keep your eyes peeled on the uh, AMSAT website. I will link that below uh, because they will post when the next activation is. They come up every few months or so. I think the last one was sort of the beginning of the year around New Year's. Uh, so yeah, just, uh, just keep your eyes peeled on when the next activation might be uh, and have a go at receiving some pictures from space. As I say, you don't need anything particularly fancy. I don't have anything particularly fancy. At least I don't class what I've got as fancy. You just need a radio, a computer, some way to get audio from one to the other, or if you don't even have that, a handheld and your smartphone with uh, an SSTV app of which there are a number. And if you like this video, there's a button specifically for that. If you haven't, there's another one that seems to work just fine too. And if you haven't already done so, please do click on that subscribe button and also click that notification bell and you'll be told whenever I upload a new video. There's another video coming up over here that the algorithm thinks that you're like next. Until next time, 73. Bye-bye.